Here we go. <laughs> hey guys, and welcome back to Dan's Pro Shop. Today, we got a good one for you. At least I feel it is anyway. Nothing can make your shop more handy, more readily accessible, and honestly, just user friendly than cleaning up the stuff that you use all the time. The stuff that you don't think about, the stuff that you just plumb overthink because you're so used to the way you've been doing it, you're like, why fix what's broken, right? Well, it's something as simple as an extension cord reel, a good, high quality, like commercial slash industrial grade one, to be honest. It's just awesome. Hang it on the wall, hang it on the ceiling, whatever you need to do. Let's dig into this thing and see what it's all about. All right, guys, disclosure time. Doing Wills reached out to me and asked me if I'd be interested in checking this thing out and giving you guys an honest review. Naturally, yeah, I'm a tool junkie. You guys know this, and I'm assuming you are too. That's why you're here. Welcome. We're all the same. We got jackets. <laughs> so let's tear into this thing. Well, give me, give you some specs here before we actually get it open. This guy, you can see here on the sticker on the front, it's a 60-foot reel. And if you guys have done any digging or looking at these things, you know to get anything over 60 foot or any anything over 50 really is difficult to find. And not so much the length, but the gauge. This particular one is a 12-3. So if you guys know anything about wiring, the smaller the number, the bigger the gauge. A lot of regular extension cords that you see, I, I don't even know, they're everywhere. I'll show you one. But you see a lot more often than not like 14 and 16 and sometimes even 18 gauge extension cords and it's just ugh, that's like trying to run a miter saw off of like a string of christmas lights and this is one thing that you really don't want to compromise on because whenever you're running that kind of power especially like if you're using a compound miter saw or like a router or like running your dust collection system or a grinder or something you don't want to have to worry about something that you shouldn't have to worry about like your extension cord so this thing being number one 12 gauge and number two 60 feet long that's absolutely awesome now let's actually check it out so if you guys are interested in this particular one hcr alpha 60 alpha i don't know what the heck that means but i'm guessing the 60 means 60 feet <laughs> why not right so first things first i mean it's in a pretty beefy package i mean not that that much matters because uh well i guess it's got to survive the ups man but uh, yeah, got some bubble wrap. This thing has some girth to it, heads up. So uh, if you plan on mounting this thing on the wall or ceiling, like is the whole point here, make sure that your substrate is sufficient to hold this thing. I'd but 25 pounds-ish, maybe if I had to guess. But uh, yeah, this thing, it looks stout. I mean, I've dealt with these in the past. I've gotten bit, you know, trying to get a good deal, go to Harbor Freight and get one of the... Those are lessons learned. Allow me to do that instead of you. Just go ahead and get something good right off the bat. Something that'll serve you for a long time. Who knows, man? Your kid might inherit this thing. So, another cool thing that I noticed about this particular one is the whip where it actually plugs into your outlet somewhere. It's like four and a half, five feet long. So if you guys have dealt with these things, like this cruddy, it's just a trouble light reel. The cord on this thing is like nine inches long. It's ridiculous. So you have to have the reel so close to your outlet that it really limits the possibilities of what you can do here. These guys here really thought about that and gave you a sufficient amount of room so you have options going around your outlet. It may seem menial and dumb, but something as simple as this, huge, thanks. And while we're here on this side of the reel, you guys take a gander right here. This guy right here is its own circuit breaker. That's right, this thing has its own breaker. So in the event you're pulling too many gigawatts on this thing, you know, like running 10 miter saws at once, it's, yeah, we've all been there, come on. But it will pop this thing instead of the breaker on the circuit for that outlet. So if you run into a situation where this thing pops or you go over 15 amps or something, you don't have to run back into the house to click the breaker or find it or 
you can avoid that whole mess because there's a breaker on this thing. It's just so nice. It's just the user-friendly factor, you know? If something happens, it's right here. You don't gotta go hunting. Another great add-on. And finally, we get to the business end of this thing. You guys take a look here. We have a three outlet. Three, count them, three. That's right. You don't have your traditional just one where you would have to put one of those three outlet things on it. This just comes with it. I mean, by all means, you don't need to use all three of them, but it's cool that it's there. So you don't have to add anything. This is just ready to go for way a lot of all kinds of application. So let's just go ahead and smoke test this thing, huh? Fire it up and see what we got. Oh, looky here. We even get an LED indicator letting us know that this thing is powered up. So, I mean, hey, man, you're maybe using this thing on a job site. You don't know what circuits are hot or whatever. You don't have to bust out the meter or whatever. You just plug it in. And the LED tells you that this thing is hot and ready to go. And check that out. We even have an LED in the plug end. So you know whenever this thing is hot. So you have this stretched out 60 feet. You can't see the reel. You might be in the next room over. But you know, because the LED indicator here in the plug, that everything's ready to go. Now that we've gone through the meat and potatoes here, let's check out the side dishes. So we got a nice little bubble wrap thing of uh, accoutrement hardware, if you will. So... Solid educated guess, wall mounting bracket. So we'll find a suitable home for this thing, I promise. Let's see, uh, we got the Emanuel. Yeah, we'll use that. And some supplied mounting hardware, that's cool. We got, uh, it looks like some number 12 wood screws, uh, galvanized or I don't know, they're kind of blue. Let's just say that they're galvanized. And we even have some wedge anchors. These are sleeve wedges, in case you guys are wondering. They're not regular, like, concrete anchors. These ones are better used for, like, uh, less than suitable masonry. Like, if you're going into brick or mortar or something, like you would typically see on a wall. I mean, yeah, you can use this in cinder blocks and stuff. But either way, it's cool that they supply this. Because if you had to go to, like, your T&M or Home Depot or whatever and grab some of these, these are, like, three or four bucks a piece. And uh, that's just an added cost that we don't have to do because it's supplied. Awesome. And uh, one last little machine screw here. And if I had to venture a guess, I bet you any money that this boy indexes with the bracket here. So once we get everything hung on the wall and this is all situated where we want it to go, this just secures the reel to the bracket. So, uh, yeah, I probably would have found that out if we read the book, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. Well then, I guess there's uh, nothing left to do it but to do it. Yeah, I need some game fuel. <laughs> nice koozie, huh? Well, I guess, I've done survey here. And uh, if you guys can tell, wall real estate is tight in this joint. And I only have an eight foot ceiling. So that kind of leaves me iffy on where this thing can go. I was really thinking about putting this thing in the ceiling by the garage door opener. So then like 60 feet is more than enough, right? I mean, yeah, but my pickup truck is like seven foot two. And if I hung this thing from the ceiling, yeah, A and B, it wouldn't work. So we're going to take out the old trouble light here. It's uh, served me well for probably, I don't know, 12, 15 some odd years. Probably put that in the trailer. Might use it somewhere else, might not, whatever. But it doesn't owe me anything. It's paid its dues. Time to replace the old and busted with new hotness. So we'll tear down some of this stuff, and don't worry, we'll relocate the Harley sign. Relax. But uh, I feel like this, since we have that nice five-foot plug-in cord, I don't have to be so close to the outlet. We can put this thing up here, out of the old noggin way here, put it there, and then I got plenty of room. We can run this thing clean out in the driveway. It's gonna be super nice. So, uh, let's get us... Uh, Get us some uh, company and tool here. Tear this thing down. Yeah. Oh boy. Man, I should have worn my big boy pants. Use a little more elevation. All right, now that we're getting ready to actually slap this thing on the wall, I've had a chance to better look over the whole bracketry situation and see how this is going. And I gotta say, man, 
10 out of 10 on the design of this thing. Because if you guys have ever hung a reel on the wall, specifically air hose reels, they are notoriously just a mother. Because the way that the mount and the bracket and everything is designed, like it doesn't come off or just the holes you can't get to with a ratchet or a screwdriver or something. Because of this clever two-piece design, this thing just slides over the back here and then go figure that little screw that i was talking about retains everything in the top so it doesn't slide off but the weight of it hangs in the bracket so that screw is really just a safety so it doesn't come up out of it but this is really nice because you can just put this wherever you want clean egress everything easy to get to to put the bracket onto the wall and then the reel just slides into it nice super nice Alrighty, now we're just gonna kind of eyeball this where I want it. Now, something to pay mind to. If you're gonna do something like this on the wall where it's close to the ceiling, because of how this bracket works, and that the reel, come on, there you go, and that the reel slides in from the top, make sure you have suitable room above the bracket so it can go above it and then slide down in. So that's something I'm gonna to have to pay mind to here, that wherever I put this, I have to have enough room above it to go above the bracket and slide down in. So, uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and take a quick measurement of that. Man, I'm falling apart over here. If you can hear everything clanging off the ground. Let's see, this thing is 13 inches tall, so, I know I need at least 13 inches. Go ahead and scribe a mark there. Cool. Now I know that's where the top of my bracket has to be and I have enough room to get up in there. Go ahead and take our hardware here. Plant this little beauty where you want it. And we're gonna do this super accurate and just use our calibrated eyeball to make sure it's plumb. Trust me, man, tried and trusted. Yeah, yeah, that looks about it. Uh-huh. I like it. Send it. Yeah, that definitely didn't move when we were putting the screw in. <laughs> oh. There you go, little buddy. Now, that thing is more secure than your social security. <laughs> uh, hey man, I'm a tool guy, not a comedian. So, it's a good thing we went up and measured that. <sighs> Look at you there, fellas. How nice is that? And now, we've got plenty of room. Plug into that outlet here, choose it. And man, that's nice. We're going to go ahead and uh, stretch this thing out and give you guys a fair overview here. Well, let's just see what this little guy's got in store, shall we? Huh? Excuse the mess in here, guys. This is like practically Toys R Us Generation 2 in here. So, but uh, I've gotten used to working around it. Man, this thing just, just goes for a mile. Holy cow. And there we go. That is uh, right about 60 feet. I know you guys can't even see me. I'm clean out of the frame here. But look at this. So um, the garage is 28 deep from where I'm standing to the wall back there. So we got that much. And even more of 12.3 extension cord. This is beefy stuff. I mean, I'll bring you in and we'll take a look because I need to adjust that knob for the retract thing anyway. But uh, I'll set you up over there so you can see how well this thing retracts. If you guys have used these before, I'm sure you've had some cheaper crappy ones that it just it doesn't want to go back in because it like coils up weird inside. Not the case with this one. I'm serious. Check it out. So we all know how these work. You just give it a yank and it starts going back. Get past the click. Just let it run. Use it. Whoa, I just tried taking out the camera. <laughs> Look at that. 
60 feet in a couple seconds and uh, almost killed you. But uh, this thing's got some gusto. So this is not like the traditional ones that you've had to fight and try to put back in like a closed reel fishing line, you know? <laughs> like this thing, it wants to go home. That's really cool. And I mean, I'm sure that you guys are familiar. You used them before. Pull it out until you hear the click. You get three clicks. Stop somewhere in between that three and it stops wherever you want it. And then whenever you're done, go past the click and let it go. But what we're gonna do now is take this stop and move it so it's a little more in the realm of what I'm looking for over here. So doing this is simple enough. This just has a couple Phillips head screws captured on the other side here. All you do is loosen these things. Then you slide this up and down to wherever you want. So, I don't know, I want it somewhere where I'm not going to be bashing my head off of it, but uh, somewhere where it's easy to get. I don't know, that looks pretty good right there. So, find your happy spot and just sink these number two Phillips back down. <laughs> Bob's your uncle. You got an industrial 60 foot 12 gauge extension cord hanging on your wall to do whatever you want to do whenever you want to do it and whenever you're done clean it up that's it no more winding extension cords it's, oh ain't nobody got time for that oh, oh oh i about plum forgot i got so excited about using this thing i'm gonna put our safety screw up on the top of the bracket here I mean, honestly, I don't see this becoming an issue because this whole thing would have to come up out of here 10 some odd inches to come out of here. But uh, yeah, we have it, it's supplied. It's just a good idea. So we'll just go ahead and put this thing in the top of the bracket here and uh, call that good enough. Nice. Now that's in there, it keeps this from coming up out of the bracket. Like I said, I don't think it's going to be an issue, but uh, now I know it's not going to be an issue. Well guys, uh, that about wraps this thing up. You saw how easy that was from out of the box onto the wall in just a couple of minutes. And honestly, a lot quicker if you're not talking through the whole process. But it doesn't matter if you're a veteran doing this, you have a multi-million dollar shop, or you're doing this out of your garden shed. Hey man, getting it done is getting it done. Doesn't matter how you get it done. But that being said, the stuff that you can use to help you get it done, hey, why not help yourself? Help yourself, right? Having something as simple as a good commercial grade industrial extension cord hanging from the wall or the ceiling or whatever, it's just, it's game changing because you don't have to kick around cords on the floor or untangle them out of the bed of your truck. Well, I mean, if it's in your truck, it's a different story. We're talking about shop use here, but I digress. You see what I'm getting at here. This is just super user friendly. It's always here, it's always hot, it's always ready to go, and it's super easy to put away. It's one less thing you have to pick up at the end of the day. Just yank it and let it ride. You know, this is super nice. So if you guys are interested in picking up one of these dueling wheels, 60 foot, 12 gauge extension cords, Check out the link in the description below to see this thing and all the other great stuff that they have. I mean, I've swept through their website and they specialize in electronic kind of stuff. It's not just this. They have like transformers for yard lights and like specialized motors and controllers and stuff for swimming pools. And it's like just like consumer slash commercial grade electronics for like home and integrating commercially. It's just, they have a lot of cool stuff, honestly. So if you are interested, check out the link in the description. Hopefully you guys dig this. You can do something like this in your own shop. And we will see you next time.